Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Alex, and I'm outside Old Trafford. It's not as glorious as it has been. It's a little bit chilly, not going to lie, but it's meant to be warmer later on. So that's your news. That's your weather report done. We've got all sorts of stuff coming up. We've got transfer stuff. Of course, we will be talking about Jason Sanchez. He's here every day of the week. We've also got, and Joe Smith behind the camera is really excited about this one, a touch of the supernatural to talk about today. But let's kick off. We're talking Sergio Romero to start with. He's talked a little bit about where his future lies after Manchester United. He spoke out saying that, you know, he got let go from Manchester United. He had the opportunity last year, but things didn't quite work out. And now he's looking to go to another European club. He's had offers from England, Italy and Spain. And we'll wait and see where Sergio Romero ends up. Now, I've seen a lot of people on videos, in comments, in Twitter and all over the place who said we treated Sergio Romero really badly and we, we did all these things do you know what I'm not too sure about that he knew exactly what he was signing up for Manchester United he was always going to be a backup goalkeeper he was never going to be a first choice player he was going to be a sub a second choice maybe even a third choice and he ended up being that third choice maybe even fourth choice towards the time the end of his time at Manchester United so look we still paid him he didn't do too bad he was doing all right he just played 10 less games than he was going to do last season. That's about it. That was all it was. But at the same time, there are some very good memories with Sergio Romero, of course, winning the Europa League and being the goalkeeper for that and having some very good performances. There was a lot of time we thought he might be the number one goalkeeper for Manchester United when De Gea was potentially leaving with all the, the facts in situation and all that. It looked like Romero could have been our number one goalkeeper for a bit of time. But he ended up being a very, very, very good backup, winning us the Europa League and we will wish him luck in the future. Next up, CIES Football, them lads, they're talking about the most the valuable players in the world and they've done their list and where they've compiled, compiled things, used some stats, age, contracts, all that kind of stuff to say who are the most valuable footballers in the world. And Manchester United have three, yes that's three, of the top ten players on that list. Bruno Fernandes coming in at, valued at 133, let me get that right, 154, sorry, million euros. Marcus Rashford, fourth, third on that list, ahead of Erling Haaland at 159 million euros. Mason Greenwood, second on that list, 178 million. And then that Phil Foden lad from City who won the PFA Young Player of the Year after starting 15 games. Yeah, I know, madness. Uh, but he is valued at 190 million. Quickly, we will run through the top 10 of those. We've got Mason Mount in 10th place. Jao Felix, Alfonso Davis, Pedri Gonzalez, Frankie de Jong, Bruno Fernandes, Erling Haaland, Marcus Rashford, Mason Greenwood and Phil Foden. We've been linked with a lot of them, haven't we? A lot. Uncomfortable amount. But still, it does kind of show the way that this squad has progressed under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And he's kind of gotten us to the point where we have got three very, very exciting players in there. You've still got Paul Pogba there, who is... He's playing a lot of football and is, is a very, very good player. You've got the likes of David De Gea and Dean Henderson, who are considered very good players. Juan Basaka, who was a £50 million right back not too long ago. We've got a very young squad that's developing and has the potential to be very, very good. Now, look, here's the thing. We need those added players. We need the Jason Sanchez, which I'll get onto later. We need a few more midfielders. We need those centre half. We maybe even need some more experienced players. There's some more articles today around Rafael Varane and I was willing to pay 12 million euros net in salary for him, which is a lot. Like that's 250 grand a week after taxes. So that's a lot of money. But maybe they're the kind of players we need now to kind of take this young squad, this relatively inexperienced squad for as much as they've they played in some big games, they've played in a lot of Premier League games, they haven't really won the trophies. And I think we need one or two more players to take this squad said three of the top 10 value players in the world in that squad get a couple more experienced players around them and hopefully we'll have a very very good season next year right it's what you've all been waiting for it wouldn't be a news without talking about Jason Sanchez about Jaden Sancho coming from Borussia Dortmund to Manchester United this one is really gathering place I think it now in my opinion it's more a when rather than an if now for Jaden Sanchez. Jaden Sanchez, we're just we're combining names now on, on Stretford Paddock. Is it Jason Sanchez? Is it Jaden Sancho? Whatever you want to call him. But it looks like an, a when rather than an if now. And this is in the Times talking that Manchester United are looking at getting Jaden Sancho now that the price has dropped to 80 million euros plus add ons. 
that was more like what I think Manchester United wanted to play, pay last season. I think that's what they kind of bid last season. That was the, the talks that we're going to put you these add-ons. It could go up to 120, but United have to win Champions Leagues and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Jaden Sancho's going to have to score 45 goals every season for the next 10 years, and he'll have to win the Ballon d'Or to get that money. But I think that now that it's, that's where Dortmund kind of are at, get that 80 million in up front, and then we kind of build up from there with with the add-ons. The other thing about this article is it talks about Erling Haaland. He's kind of gone quiet. You know, at the start of all this, it looked like I thought Manchester City was it was nailed on to get him. There was then the rumours that uh, um, Barcelona were looking at getting him, but it looks like they've now got Sergio Aguero, and that's not going to happen this summer. And they're saying that Chelsea are going to put a bid in for Erling Haaland, which would be kind of... You know, off the wall bit. I think everyone kind of thought that he would maybe go to those top two Spanish clubs or maybe the two clubs in Manchester. But Chelsea winning the Champions League, that fantastic end to the season that they had, people kind of forget how much money they have and how much money they spend. And they're definitely in the bracket of being able to spend the 120, 130, 140 million you'd need to get Erling Haaland this summer. Now, again, Dortmund, are they going to try and keep him for one more year? They're going to try and keep him until that release clause comes in, which is around the 65, 75 million pound mark. Are they going to keep him for that length of time? Which would then open up a ridiculous bidding war between these clubs. Manchester United will be definitely back in the mix. Manchester City will definitely be in the mix, depending on what they do this summer with Harry Kane. The Spanish clubs would probably be able to afford that. It would be chaos next summer, but I think Chelsea, maybe they're going to try and get in ahead of everybody else, spend that big money, and now that they won the Champions League, well, they've got that bit more of a pull again. They've got that kind of thing that they could say, look, let's go and get the best striker in the world, and they could potentially be one of those top teams next season. They obviously won the Champions League next year, but they want to get back to being consistent and competing in the Premier League. So... Borussia Dortmund have obviously got those two players. They've got Jadon Sancho. He's looking at going this summer. It's whether Erling Haaland follows him out the door, and that'll be a good one to spot. And whether either of the two affect the other. If Jadon Sancho goes this summer, does that mean that Borussia Dortmund go, no, we have to keep Erling Haaland. We have to keep these players for next season. And vice versa, if someone comes in with a big bid for Erling Haaland, does that mean that there's any jeopardy in Jadon Sancho coming to Manchester United and maybe that move not going through? Let me know in the comments what you think about that's going to happen. Do you think Erling Haaland leave this summer? And do you think the Jadon Sancho deal happens before the start of the Euros? So just got back to the studio and news has broken that Donny van der Beek will miss Euro 2020. He was, tra- he was trained on his own yesterday. Uh, so some people thought that that might be something. And then today... The, the Dutch team have announced on their Twitter, it's been retweeted by Simon Stone, saying that Donny van der Beek will not play due to a recurring injury and a problem that he's had, he's going to take the time to recover. Look, is that a good thing for Manchester United? He obviously hasn't had the best season, he hasn't played too much football. I think him rushing into the Euros, especially with the injury, would be a bad thing. Him going home, him getting a bit of, um, bit of time off, hopefully to work on his fitness, hopefully he's back playing well for Manchester United next season. Right, the supernatural story, the one you've all been waiting for this morning. <laughs> Had to touch on this one. This has gone a bit viral on Reddit and stuff like that. Chris Smalling, I know he's not a Man United player anymore, but him and his wife, they were sat there last night, and this is the start of the quote. Okay, so I promise we weren't on magic mushrooms or anything, <laughs> but me and Chris, or oh, me, I Smalling, saw the craziest UFO last night. Not like a f- quick few seconds, sighting that something high in the sky that could have been some a plane. It flew down low past us and then turned and shot back up in the sky where it stayed for an hour, maybe longer, but we had to leave. I mean, wow. And then she goes on explaining it more in the sky, although Chris could see it rotating with lights flashing all around it. It could have been anything. (laughs) UFO. She's gone. They've gone mad. The world's gone mad. Crazy. Anyone seen anything similar? She ends the post. It's hard to explain, as it was well camouflaged, but it was like two separate 3D rectangles rotating around each other with the faint lights moving around the edges. Well, that, you know, transfer season stuff, <laughs> just chaos, isn't it? Even, even Chris Small and his wife have absolutely lost the plot. It's, it's been a bit of a mad year. Chris Small and his wife seeing UFOs, it's not even the worst thing that's happened or even the most ridiculous thing that's happened. Let us know in the comments. Do you think Chris Small and saw a UFO last, last night? And let us know, have you ever seen a UFO? <laughs> oh, brilliant. Ronaldo Brown will be all over this and his conspiracy theories. Right, that has been all from me this morning outside Old Trafford. I have been Alex. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're checking out the merchandise. Also, coming up very shortly, we will be having... Twitch streams for some of the best 
European Championship games this summer. So make sure you're checking out our Twitch channel where we will be heading over the summer, talking Euros, talking transfers and all that good stuff. So make sure you're liking the video, make sure you're subscribing and I'll see you next time.